So our first speaker, Kimberly Collis, has exhibited her work all over the world and is the co-founder of New Forest, a sustainability institute in Brooks, Maine. Her talk today is called Portrait of the Ecological Self. So I would like to welcome Kimberly, welcome Kimberly up here, and if you can just hold the questions to the end, that'd be great. Hello, welcome. Thank you for coming. I'm going to share with you today a project I've been working on called the Portrait of the Ecological Self. And I'll tell you about the project and my process. Um, and I'll give you some background on what brought me to this work. And then I'll briefly talk about how my process led to a larger installation called Four Gates with Guards, which was the work that most brought out my own ecological self. And then I'll end with a meditation on how this all came together for me through the portrait of called the Beekeeper's Wife, which is the image you see here. This is um, 11 inches by 7 by 11. It's wasp paper on cast plaster with gouache and wood. Um, and it's a relief that hangs against the wall. Most of the images you see today from my talk are um, the body parts and the figures are all life-size. Portrait of the ecological self. Is there an ecological self? Is there a place within us that remembers we are nature? Can this self hold the answers on how to live sustainably within the cycles and limits of our home planet? Through the art project, Portrait of the Ecological Self, I explore these questions. Since this ecological self is not always visible in our physical form, we might not see ourselves as especially connected to nature. Using natural materials and symbols based in nature, here, tomatillo shells and the color green, I've created a series of portraits that allow me to see myself as being interconnected with nature. In this view, the traditional portrait extends to include more than the physical body and now includes nature's materials, rhythms, and other species. Wasp paper becomes skin, roots grow from my feet, I may, may now become a cave, a bird, or a bush. My process followed a daily routine. I'd spend the mornings researching and afternoons sculpting. My research focused on symbols from nature that seemed particularly significant to the psyche, like mountains and caves bees and honey, sunflowers and stars, or processes of growth or flight. After researching a symbol, I would then use intuitive writing and drawing techniques, often in the form of the circle shown here, as a meditation to bypass my rational mind. These circles are painted um, with gouache on paper. Some are retouched with ink. They're all around four inches, and they're based on real things like stars, sunflowers, um, cells, atoms. I use the writing and the drawing to look at symbols through my nonverbal, unconscious, or emotional self. I had found through my sustainability work that it was these more emotional connections to nature, not just scientific data, that were the real motivators to sustainable action. I was looking for where these connections were most alive in myself. I called this process research and carefully recorded my findings into journals. In the afternoon sculpting sessions, I would then take the symbols I felt most connected to and create a physical representation of my relationship to the image or myself as the image by combining the body with natural materials and forms. I would then further watch for these images and symbols outside of my studio practice. The morning sessions, dreams, daily coincidence would then lead to further images and symbols. While I learned about the images' universal symbolic meanings, I would also explore what personal meaning the images had to myself, and I would then follow or look for ways to apply this meaning to my life. Through this process, I began to realize that the more I understood my specific images and personal symbols, the more powerful relationship I had to the universal. The images seemed to be guiding me to become more specific, and ironically, the more specific I became, the more ecologically connected I felt to all things. The images from these symbols helped me illuminate the portrait and gave vision to the possibility of an ecological self. As I made each sculpture and took on the quality of each image's symbolic meaning, I was beginning to see myself as nature. In some cases, it would take years to fully understand an image. I don't feel like I understood the sculpture of the beekeeper's wife until after I had made many of the sculptures that I'll show you today. I made it long before I understood its meaning. It wasn't a portrait of who I was then, but a vision of what I could become. With these sculptures, I began to understand how symbols and their corresponding artwork or story could be used as a powerful means to prepare people for needed change and offer the sustaining vision that can get them through the chaotic and often painful periods of transition. The Bride. So some background on what brought me to this work. 
In 2001, I was newly married and had a studio in an old rope factory along the Jersey City waterfront overlooking Manhattan. On September 11th of that year, I was walking to my studio when I witnessed the attack and collapse of the World Trade Center. I was five months pregnant. My husband had just left the building 15 minutes before the first plane hit. He had recently taken a job uptown after working for six years on the 33rd floor of the Trade Center's South Tower. So we had many friends and neighbors inside the building on that day. In 2003, the U.S. went to war with Iraq and used these attacks as the motivating message behind their campaign. Though my husband and I were already environmentally minded, these two events catapulted us into action. Concerned with the effects of our nation's dependency on foreign oil, we concluded that a rural environment would be more conducive to learning how to live within the sustainable cycles of our planet. We bought a clear-cut piece of land in Brooks, Maine, and hand-built an in-ground stone house that is off the grid and heated solely with wood. It is where we now reside. After two years of hand-on house construction, I built the bride. Bride is seven feet tall and built like a house. Plaster, plaster, wood lath, and filter mat. This sculpture was one of the pieces that began to open me up to the mystical idea of receiving images, a technique I would actively practice as part of my search for the ecological self. The bottom part of the bride's skirt was originally intended to be a mountain, a mountain I was going to use as a base for another figure. As I constructed the lath frame, the whole structure fell into this graceful, sweeping form that looked more like a gown than a mountain. While I contemplated this fallen yet elegant mess, I realized that I wasn't building the mountain. I looked over to a head I had previously made, one that had the working title wedding, and understood I was building a dress for the bride. With the sculpture bride, I opened myself up to a more intuitive approach to subject, and I began to explore with more seriousness how accident and coincident could be used to unfold meaning and relationship within my work, specifically with this piece, how the bride relates to the mountain, the mountaintop, and the altar and throne in certain religious traditions. Blood root. The work. This is blood root. It's cast plaster, wood, pigment, and rope, 32 inches by 36 by uh, length of rope. And the upcoming images, are body parts are all life-size. At this time, I was founding member of New Forest Institute, also in Brooks, Maine. New Forest provided opportunities for research and education and sustainability to school children, energy auditors, and permaculture gardeners. My work at New Forest allowed me to think in terms of landscape as art, and I started to consider the body as part of the land, the piece of land we always inhabit. It was there I began working with the concept of the ecological self. The first series of images from this project came to me not as full figures, but as body parts. Blood root was one of the beginning images. Roots hang from my feet, held high in the air, the feet disembodied, the roots disconnected. This work was inspired by a line of poetry from the nature poet and activist Terry Tempest Williams. For lack of intimacy, we are bleeding from the roots. This line epitomized the lack of intimacy our culture is experienced with land and place and how that in turn was reflected in our family relationships and personal histories. Burning Bush. At the time I was considering symbols from nature, I was rereading the story of Moses. When Moses was called to action by God, he was given the very literal image of the burning bush. From my work with symbols, I realized that the image was not arbitrary, but was the image of what Moses was to become burning with the holy fire, yet not consumed. I created my own burning bush in honor of this understanding, as well as a statement of my own call to action, one that was decidedly female. Issues of male and female identity still being difficult within our culture, I use humor here and lighten the subject, to lighten the subject and juxtapose it with the seriousness of an icon. Remember. This piece is called Remember. I made it to remind myself that there would be a return Searching for a new ecological identity required a painful shedding of the old. The series of body parts began to represent a real taking apart, my own dismemberment ritual. After 9-11 and the Iraq War, I had given up my teaching job to move to Maine. The financial strain of building a house and nonprofit threatened and eventually ended my ability to have a separate studio for my work. And I didn't even know if making art had made sense anymore. Remember is based on the Jewish spiritual practicing of remembering and a quote from the Benedict Abbas and mystic Hildegard of Bingen Remembering heals her. You can see here an almost obsessive cry to remember, not just a single tied string around the finger, but remember, 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 there will be rebirth. Four gates with guards. 
The process of morning research and afternoon sculpting was now building into a larger symbolic exploration and construction called Four Gates with Guards, where I would take on the ecological self in a much larger scale. Four Gates with Guards became my own meditation on how natural processes such as cell propagation, bees building honeycomb, changes in weather, seasons, time, birth, death, and decay become the symbolic language of life. I was beginning to see that how we create meaning from nature could be used to bring us back into relationship with nature. Four Gates with Guard represents my journey to the ecological self through nature-based symbols as I met each guard and went through each gate. Though not a portrait in itself, the installation was key to my understanding and visualization of the ecological self. I'll briefly go through the installation. The figures are based on carns or stacks of rocks that are common in the main landscape. Each has its own cave. The figures coincide with the stages of a spiritual quest represented here as cave, which is a stage of facing one's fears, often called cave time. This is a detailed image of the figure that sits inside cave. Here again I come to the mountain by first becoming the cave. This figure is 26 inches tall. It's cast FGR resin with bronze patina and wool. The second figure is basket. At first basket is a threshing basket, then it is used to separate the wheat from the chaff. Then it becomes a planting basket containing the new seeds or eggs for the next generation. And finally the harvest basket, the bee maiden. The third gate and guard is called the Bee Maiden. She is filled with the precious honeycomb that represents spiritual food that is either stolen or given as a gift from the gods. This is a back view detail of Bee Maiden. Three of the figures are given false faces from the back view, like butterfly wings have false eyes, so that as you approach from the back, you might think you're approaching from the front. Sisters. The fourth gate guard is called Sisters and stands for the unification of the microcosm and the macrocosm. The cosmos is now contained within. Sisters is named for the Pleiades, the place in the heavens where the spirit exits and enters. This cosmic spot is also represented on a human scale as the top of the skull or a smoke hole in a tent. This is the back view of Sisters. Here, instead of false eyes, there is a chimney. The central floor piece of Four Gates with Guards is a six foot by six foot painted tile piece and is called the field, and it is a map of the mountain. It's a two dimensional view of the mountain from above combined with a calendula flower. The mountain is used here as a chosen destination of the spiritual seeker, as a perfect meeting point between heaven and earth. The central black circle with the orange petals implies the fire and the pit of the volcanic core the volcano making the mountain not just the highest point, but also the access point to the deepest center of the earth. The direction implied by the map is to reach into the heavens as well as the earth to align oneself to receive wisdom. And if this is to be missed, there's a large central target drawn in black, an obvious X marks the spot where one would find the treasure. The outer detail of this artwork resembles the petals of a calendula flower. This is a healing flower and called the bride of the sun by certain monks because its head follows the sun throughout the day like a sunflower, a secret indication to follow the sun to reach the mountain. Here's another look at the full installation, four gates with guards. I think it's only in our heads that we are alienated. Our bodies are still carrying on a conversation with the planet, but our heads are denying it. Gary Lawless. As I was working on this installation, I was collaborating with nature poet Gary Lawless. He wrote poems that corresponded with the work and created two chapbooks, one titled Basket and the other Field, both with the subtitle Notes Towards a Field Guide. His poetry and thinking greatly influenced this work. After I made Ford Gates with Guards, my head was still denying what had occurred while I was making the installation. I went back through my research journals and created my own handmade books on various symbols, their meanings, and any corresponding coincidence that occurred while I was making the work. I was especially questioning if there was any significance to the symbols showing up in my daily life. Did it matter that a bat came and flew around my studio while I was making the cave? Would the bumblebees have built a nest in my studio wall if I hadn't been building the bee maiden? While making Sisters, I was given three books by two different people that told the story of a thousand and one Arabian nights, where Scheherazade ends the cycle of death to the wives of the emperor by telling stories to her sister. In each of the books, the sisters have these long braids like the ones I had hung as a talisman belt on the sister's sculpture for the women who had been killed or abused throughout our history. 
Was there another energy drawing these images to me? Can our psyche affect space and time? Were the images sent, or was I just projecting meaning onto these coincidences? If so, could that still be considered meaningful? Is it possible that we contain a hidden wisdom, one that we could access to address larger ecological questions? Was this the voice of nature? From my research journals, I made 43 of these handmade books. The books have become a font of images for my future work. When I am a bird. It's cast architectural concrete, bronze powder, ground pigments, and wax. The sculpture is 12 inches tall. Here, a figure of the bird overlooks the mountain edge. The sculpture, When I am a Bird, referring to the times when there can be spiritual insight. Conclusion. Through my search for the ecological self and my study of the symbols that illuminate the self, I went through a process of discovering how nature speaks, which is often through the formal relationships and symbols, the very language of art. I was relearning why this is important for our culture to look again at the use of images that come to us and be able to use them, to ride them to a new understanding and place of wisdom, to receive them and use them as the map of the mountain. I began to conceive of how this might be a way to deeper ecological understanding, to use art to uncover or recall the intimate relationship to place that exists in all humans, and to use nature's symbols as a way to rejoin the psyche with the earth for renewed meaning. Through even a rudimentary look into symbols, it becomes clear what a rich link they are between us, our natural environment, the cosmos, and our internal selves. As a portrait has the energy and the meaning to represent the subject, these images became the face of myself. But also then, through their larger universal meaning, they could also become the face of nature, marrying the individual with the universal. As I took on the aspects of each symbol, the symbols illuminated a more natural self, a self in conversation with nature, a self that had an intimate connection with the cosmos. A symbolic understanding of nature defined a new self-portrait, illuminating my own portrait of the ecological self. I'll now end with a meditation on the beekeeper's wife. Who is the beekeeper's wife? The beekeeper's wife has access to the hives. The hives are where the honey is stored. Bees are creative and spiritual, productive and rich, busy with creativity and richness of spirituality. The beekeeper's wife has access to the hives, and she has the smoke to calm the bees, so she might access the honey. Who is she the wife of? The wife of the beekeeper. Who is the beekeeper that keeps the hive? God is the beekeeper that keeps the hives. What is the hive? Our spiritual self our inner soul, that is filled with the spiritual food. The pipe creates a smoke. The smoke is contemplation, spiritual practice, art, that gives access through the busy mind, through the doubting mind, through the working mind, to the spiritual food, the honey. Thank you. <laughs>